Hey everybody, this is Alan from OC Nerf, and today we are going to be taking a look at one of my favorite blasters of all time, certainly one of my favorite blasters to mod. Um, before I even started this channel, this was the blaster that was uh, one of my go-tos for modding and doing commissions on, um, just because I loved it so much, I th the potential of the plunger tube in here, the fact that it's clip-fed, there's so much to love about it, and then all the things that are out there and available for kits that you can drop in are amazing, um, as well as the modifications that have been done for years in the uh, Nerf internet community, like brassing and whatnot. Um, so what we're going to be going ahead and doing is for my channel, I might as well take a look at one of my favorites, and we're going to be doing a build log for the uh, long shot. This is the original yellow long shot CS6, if you can still read that right there. Um, what we're going to be doing is uh, kind of doing, as I mentioned, a build log. We are going to be taking this thing apart. We are going to be doing not just some basics internals, but we're also going to be doing a brass breach. Um, there's a number of ways to do brass breach. We're going to do a very specific kind of brass breach for this long shot. We're also going to power this up with really high spring and do some... Um, reinforcements, we're going to do some cosmetic work to the outside. This is going to be a whole new blaster by the time we're done with it. That being said, uh, we're going to do this in parts. So the first part, which is this part of the build log, is going to be kind of disassembly, taking a look at the internal working, seeing how a long shot works. Um, I think that there's a lot to learn in modifications and the purpose of my channel is to kind of help those that are getting into the hobby understand how something works and also have some kind of content for people that have been in the hobby for a while and maybe haven't tried a few of the things that uh, I'm going to. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get some tools out for you and we'll talk about this plaster a little bit and the tools that we're going to need for this modification. Starting off with any kind of uh, screwdriver, I have this. <clears throat> this is a very small size zero screwdriver. I put it on a low setting and I kind of just use it as fast or as little as I need to. You can use your own screwdriver, you don't have to have an electric one, but I use an electric one just because it's faster. You don't necessarily need this. I My first mods did not use this. My first mods did not use a uh, rotary tool. Um, this is my Craftsman uh, rotary tool. <clears throat> um, sometimes I'll call it a Dremel because it's such a popular name. But I uh, didn't have one of these, but you might want to use one of these if you have one. I used a knife and a pair of snips, um, which you will also need. So I've got my knife here, uh, just a little pocket knife to help cut things out, and a pair of snips. For the rotary tool, going back to that for a bit, I'm going to bring out some of the things that I might end up using for that. This is a cutting tool and another cutting tool, depending on which one I want to use here, um, and then a sanding drum to kind of clean up the work, and maybe a grinding tool in case I need to do a little bit more. Uh, this is just obviously if you've used one of these to help kind of lock things down. I will also be using some pipe cutters, and again, you don't necessarily have to have this. Um, I this, was, this is what we're going to use today to take out the air restrictor, um, but I think uh, the first method I did was cutting it out of the back and letting it fall through and then leaving the, uh, the the back post and then taking a pair of these needle noses and taking out the peg from the inside. So you can do it that way as well. Uh, you can also do the hammer method with a long with a long uh, flathead and just hammer it out. You can also do that. Um, but you can, you can use whatever method. This is the method we're using in this video. And just um, a couple of jewelers pliers as well. Uh, I'm going to be using I'm also going to be keeping some scissors around just in case I need it, and uh, some adhesive. I'm not sure if I'm going to use that today. And anytime you're using um, power tools, you want to make sure you have some safety glasses. These may look like shades, but they are actually safety glasses. Um, here you go. So these are actually safety glasses, well uh, tempered and protected. That all being aside, um, we're going to go ahead and get to, uh, oh, other things, I forgot. You also needs, possibly need some hot glue um, to fill up that dead space in the back. And uh, some grease to grease things up with. There's gonna be other tools as this build process goes along, but that's kind of the gist of what we're most likely going to use today. If I forget anything, I'll be sure to mention it as we kind of go along. 
Now, I've already forgotten one of the most important tools that you're going to need, and that's the tool to get this off. Uh, you can use a couple of flathead screwdrivers. In my case, I'm going to be using a hammer. I'm going to be using the flat clot part of the hammer to stick it underneath the uh, priming bar here. I'm sorry, the priming uh, knob here, and kind of pry it off the bar. If you've ever used a long shot, you'll know that once you snap this in, or if you thrifted it, it's snapped in, and you're not going to be able to take it off very easily because it's a one-way locking system. So as you can see here, there's that rod inside, and we're, we're going to go ahead and do is slip the uh, claw part of the hammer underneath that and pry that out and open. Now, in order to do that, I found a couple of things that were uh, pretty good practice. One is get something that raises this part of the shell off so that you're not having to deal with this being all wobbly. So I'm going to put this bottom part of the uh, this other side of the um, priming handle inside of here, so we've got a nice flat surface to work with. Two, uh, and generally you don't want to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and prime the blaster. The reason for this is because as you're moving this, this starts to move around. But with all the locks in place, it's not going to move around anymore. So I'm actually going to count on the fact that it's locked. The other thing I'm going to use is a piece of cardboard to kind of keep uh, the shell from getting any kind of damage from this metal. That's going to, that I'm going to be using to pry it open with. So I'm going to go ahead and put it here, and I'm going to use one of these edges here to kind of help give me even more of leverage to uh, pull it up. So sorry if I get in the camera shot a little bit. I'm going to try not to. But I'm going to pull this up. I'm going to put this down, and I'm going to stick this claw as best as I can underneath. So it'll look kind of like this, right? Okay, so let me do that again better on camera. There we go. So, once you've kind of stuck it under there. Now, I haven't pried this off. I know in a lot of videos um, where there's a tutorial for this, it's already been pried off. Um, so, I have not yet pried this off, so you're going to see it work in real time here. Now, the next thing you're going to do is, uh, oh man, terrible camera angles, is you're going to hold tight to this and pull straight up. Now, it's going to create some pressure on that priming handle, and it will hopefully pull it right on up. So here we go. There. And that's all you need to do. Now, it is broken in a sense, and you can see here how much uh, uh, kind of indentations have happened to the cardboard, so it protected the shell. But as I mentioned, the handle is now broken in a sense, but it is not broken in such a way that would terribly affect things. Uh, it's just the locking mechanism on this one is now no longer completely functional, so you can click it back on, but it's easier to take back off. It's not its not going to go anywhere if you're just kind of flinging it around, so it's still a usable. It's just, you don't have to do this whole thing anymore. So, I'm going to put that aside. I don't need this right now, I'm going to put that aside. And I'm going to put this aside. Huh. Where did this come from? Interesting. Anyway, I deprimed it. And now we are going to pop things open. Now, it is very important to deprime it before you open this blaster up. There are a couple of moving parts here uh, bipod and the stock, which is now going to be, oh, look at that, somewhat still on frame. Uh, excuse the sniffles, I'm kind of recovering from a little bit of a cold. Uh, so this is need, this needs to come off before anything in the body can come off. These two need to come off. Um, well, not sorry, not need to come off right now. But these two need to be open so that you can unscrew these things so that you can take the blaster apart. Now, there are there's a three hidden screws here. So there's two here that you'll need to open so you can get to that. But there's also one right here in front that you're going to need to... Um, get to when it's in a closed position. So be mindful of that. Now let's go ahead and get to unscrewing.
all the screws are off, I believe. And just to note, these two are really long screws. The rest of the body screws are pretty much the same size. And the uh, stock screws are a little bit uh, different size than the rest of them. So uh, you can keep them in the shell like I'm about to, or you can kind of just uh, take them off and put them in a pan or something like that. Oh, uh, one more thing. I should have done this before I... Before I... Um, uh, unscrewed everything so we'll be very careful but just a quick little firing there we go and that's what it does it's not particularly impressive I think I brought another one in there and it's using its original stock streamlines I'm gonna shoot it down here for a second oh okay no, not bad uh, about 20 feet. <laughs> Not too bad. So, let's take this off and let's now get the blaster open. So, we're gonna hope. Yeah, great. So, long shots are actually pretty easy to kind of take off and fit back on. Some blasters are a little bit harder than that. Um, but they're really nice to work with in that regard. Um, and fortunately, none of the screws are rusted out or stripped, which is always awesome when you get a thrifted blaster. So I'm going to take this and put it aside like I did with the stock. And we're going to go ahead and get this clip out of here. Okay, fine. It wants me to do things the way it wants to do them. There. Good enough. So, I'm going to take this out. We don't need it. Or any of its uh, streamlined darts. Okay, and I'm going to take this out in case it pops off on me. This is obviously the accessory uh, tooth. And we don't need this jam door at the moment. So, we're going to take that off. But we will be doing some work on that later. I'm going to take this off just because we don't need. Actually, it's in there pretty firmly, so I don't think it's going to go anywhere. And now we just have the internals of the long shot itself, plus this, which popped off. Put that back. That's the catch. And the screw. Okay. All right. So now, we can take a look at the internals of the long shot. If you've seen any modification reviews, you've probably seen this a dozen times. Um, so let's go over it anyway, in my style. You've got the front uh, end strike attachment for the... Uh, barrels. You got the faux barrel here that connects to the housing where it will receive the uh, the breech and has the dart tooth in it, uh, which has slipped out of its slot thanks to my meddling. Oh, there we go. So it's got its dart tooth right here, <clears throat> and this is the screw. This is the only screw that you need to take off that. Uh, silver one to take off the bipods. If you want to take off the orange piece there too, you will then need to unscrew those two black ones there. Um, so that's something to think about. But that would be where the bipod is. This is the front could have been a sight, but this whole thing is blocking the way, so I'm not really sure what to call this portion. But that's there. It can be removable uh, if you want to paint this blaster at all. You have the bolt sled, and it is yellow, as it's the original yellow, and it's got all of its original parts. You've got the side walls for the magazine to give it some guidance. You have your first lock that we're going to talk about, which is the clip lock that prevents you from uh, releasing the magazine when uh, the blaster is in its uh, closed position. You have to have this open. So, we're going to need to pull this back and what it's going to do is it's going to push that down and when it pushes that down you can now pull this magazine right if everything stays in place there we go. okay so as you can see here this little ridge on the bolt sled will push down this little notch here is going to push this lock downward so that it clears that little notch so that you can now pull on the magazine release. So that's how that lock works. We don't need it. And there's a dart in here. I didn't even see it. Don't need that. Okay. 
So the next piece as we're going along, and I'm going to go ahead and release this. figured that would happen. There we go. All right. So now it's in its downward position. As you can see here again, it is now blocking the magazine release, which is why we're going to need to take this out. Um, and then we have the magazine release. We have a trigger lock. So right now, let's just keep that catch out for now. So as you can see, I can pull this freely because there's you know, in this position, in the closed position, I need to be able to pull it in order to release the uh, the blaster. However, this right here, once it gets pushed down, will prevent me from pulling the trigger. As you can see the way the trigger is shaped here, it's got a little notch right there that this black lock will slide down into when the uh, bolt sled is pushed back, and you'll watch it here. You see that? As I push the bolt sled back, that lock pushes down, and now I cannot pull the trigger. But as it goes forward, I can now pull the trigger again. So there's that lock in place. Now this bolt sled here you'll see has a tab. It's got an, another tab on the other side as well. And this is to help uh, guide it in the shell. Now in the shell there are grooves. When we take stuff out, I'll show you. There are grooves which this sits on, and it keeps the bolt sled from moving back straight. It also has this moving washer to kind of help move it along as well. So you don't want to get rid of any of that. Normally the black pieces, sure, we're going to get be getting rid of, but this one we won't. We're going to need that one. We're going to need that one to keep things moving. Um, and of course, the trigger, as I mentioned. Um, and then we have the um, kind of the, uh, the breech for... Um, and in this specific case, it also serves as a barrel, as this faux barrel doesn't actually provide any kind of um, uh, use for the dart to go through it since it's too wide and all the, all the dart will do is kind of bounce around in there if it doesn't have enough energy, uh, which creates that barrel drag that you've often heard of. Um, so that's that. Uh, we'll get to the inside of this piston when we get a chance to, but right now this is the outside of the plunger tube. We have the, if you've never seen this internally, this is the... Uh, priming indicator so that when this goes all the way back and pushes here on this black bar so this uh, plunger rod will push all the way back past the catch which I've removed and will push on this you'll notice that it'll go from black and it runs on gears so you'll see the teeth there hopefully on the gears and the teeth on this black bar here and the spring keeping it in that forward position but as the priming rod hits this, you'll notice that it goes from black to red. And that's the priming indicator. Pretty simple system, to be honest. And rather cool and nifty. <clears throat> okay. There is a... Hold on, where's the... Oh, here we go. Okay, so I've put the catch back on here. And as you can see, there is a spring back there, which moves the catch. So as this, and you can see it ramping here on the uh, plunger head, we'll push this out of the way and then lock into place. The trigger here, as you can see, also has a ramp and meets up with the ramp on the catch here in order to release this catch. So this in the downward position will hold the plunger head back. Um, let me see if I can simulate that. This is a primed blaster right now, and as you can see here, this is holding, or catching, haha, the plunger head in place. So what we're going to do is when you see the trigger pull, you're going to notice that this is going to move up, which will allow the plunger head to, uh, sorry, the plunger uh, rod to be released. So it just needs to move up just a little bit to get out of the way. And that's the purpose of the catch, and that's pretty typical to how a lot of catches work. This one in particular, um, I don't know what kind of catch system you would call this, but uh, it is used in a lot of the end strike clip system blasters, so that's how that works. Um, I think, I, oh, uh, yes, there's one more thing. This right here, there's this black piece here, which is not actually a lock. It's more of a thing to hold things in place. So if you see here, 
unless I'm wrong, I mean, if somebody knows more about this than I do, please let me know in the comments. But in my experience, uh, this long yellow piece here is to kind of help keep the bolt sled completely straight on its track as well. And this piece right here holds down that long piece. Um, in my experience, I've also noticed that this on heavier spring loads, this bar right here, will interfere with being able to one hand prime because it will kind of uh, favor one side or favor, which side does it favor? I think it favors you to pull it on the right over here. Whereas if you pull, I think on this side, I could be wrong, one way or the other, if you pull from one side, either right or left, it would lock up. And if you pull from the left, it wouldn't lock up. So it encouraged, I guess, keeping this bar and keeping this in place would encourage you to use both hands in order to prime the blaster on a heavier spring load. Um, you can also just cut that off and take this off, and then you could prime it one-handed, but you do realize at that moment that you are priming it a little bit off. Um, so yes, this is actually kind of necessary in a way. Right now in this configuration, this is not that necessary. But on a heavier spring load, it kind of is necessary, although I do take it off um, on, on my long shots when I put heavier spring loads um, that use a, uh, a pump system. So if I'm using the bolt sleds, uh, uh, the bolt still, I keep it in place because I need to be able to know that I have a good balance on both sides. But if I'm using a pump grip, for example... You guys have seen this one on my thrifting video, but if I use a pump grip, I take it out. So this does not have that anymore. I don't know if you can see it, but it does not have that anymore. It's been cut off um, because I don't need it. Uh, I can utilize the one hand and prime, so I'm going to have this hand here. So I can one hand prime it and deep prime it here, but I can also just use the pump grip to prime it. So using the pump grip automatically is going to make it even for me just in the way it's configured. So make sure that's out of the way. But that's the purpose of that. Um, so knowing that when you're going to modify hopefully will help you determine whether or not you want to keep it. It will interfere with functionality if you're going to one hand prime a heavier spring load. If you are going to use a pump grip I'd say just get rid of it and don't worry about it. You're not going to need it, or just leave it alone. Honestly, it's not going to harm anything. Um, only if you're experiencing kind of jams, uh, pulling it back, I'd probably say then take a look at it and remove it. But other than that, just kind of leave it be. Okay, um, and that's the internal workings of the blaster itself. Now we're going to go over what we're going to take out and how.